Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, uh, I would like to say sorry for the delay. I was stuck in some other issues, so I couldn't upload the video on time. But yeah, it's never too late. So uh, today we are at day 32 of our complete DevOps course. And in this class, I'm going to talk about Kubernetes production systems. So what I mean by that is I'm going to basically explain you how DevOps engineers manage the life cycle that is like the uh, creation upgradation configuration and deletion of the kubernetes cluster in production so why is this important because you know when you uh, try to uh, see a lot of people on our channel commenting or you know people uh, practicing uh, kubernetes from various sources like udemy an academy or any other uh, popular youtube channels most of the time what i have seen people are practicing things on minikube or you know any other popular uh, lo local kubernetes uh, setups like uh, k3s k uh, sorry uh, kind k3d or micro k all of these things are like they are very good platforms for you to uh, for you to learn kubernetes and explore uh, kubernetes but you need to understand that all of them are development environments okay so what all of them are they are basically development environments or developer environments so even if you go to kubernetes official uh, sorry minikube official documentation you will see that this is just a local kubernetes cluster and should not be used on production right so they are just development environments but if you try to get into a devops position or if you are being interviewed for uh, kubernetes or uh, devops administrator positions one of your primary responsibilities would be to create infrastructure for your organization and if you are using kubernetes then your expectation would i mean expectation from you from you would be to also manage the uh, life cycle of your kubernetes clusters now if, if you are not using uh, minikube k3s kt all of these things in your organization then you should know what is the kubernetes that people are using in their organizations or what are the kubernetes distributions i'll explain you what is a distribution don't worry about it but how people manage kubernetes on their clusters now firstly let's try to understand why are they local kubernetes clusters because you know they are primarily uh you know they are not full-blown kubernetes clusters they have uh, they don't have uh, usually you set up kubernetes in high availability or all of these things these platforms do not support that okay and they do not they do not ensure any uh, issues that you run into production if you just complain minikube they say that oh we are not production uh, ready kubernetes uh, setup then uh, we don't uh, solve your problems in production okay so saying all these things let's try to understand how organizations devops engineers cloud engineers manage their kubernetes clusters in production systems okay so before that you need to understand that what is a kubernetes distribution and what are the popular kubernetes distributions because this is where your interview is going to be so people will not ask you questions on minikube people will not ask you questions on k3s whereas people will ask you what kubernetes distribution have you used in your production and if you have used any kubernetes distribution did you manage that installation did you manage the upgrades of that specific distribution so this is where your interview is going to be now what is a distribution so for any open source platforms like let's take example of linux okay so first of all linux is a open source free software so what people have done is they have developed distributions on top of it for example best example is amazon linux right so you must if you are using aws you must have seen something called as amazon linux distribution or you must have seen something called as red hat distribution CentOS, ubuntu so what are all of these things they are basically distributions like these people have taken the open source linux platform and they said that okay let enhance this create a wrappers on top of it or you know create our own distribution on it whereas like if you can uh, talk about amazon linux or red hat if you have any issues with uh, your linux platform let's say your kernel is not working well or any of these things so you can directly talk to red hat or amazon linux and they will also on time if you are using amazon linux one of the advantages they will uh, ensure that whenever there is uh, security patches or any of these things they upgrade on time to time basis it's not that open source platforms don't do it but because you are paying for uh, let's say you are using red hat subscription because you are paying for red hat subscription so they ensure that your op uh, operating system or your kernel is safe from all of the security vulnerabilities right so this is one of the advantages of uh, providing the distributed version similarly even if you take example of in the same lines kubernetes okay so kubernetes is a 
open source container orchestration solution platform right it's a open source coe platform container orchestration engine or container orchestration solution so what people have done is they have identified that okay so let's build software on top of kubernetes or let's build distributions on top of kubernetes for example what uh, Amazon has done is they have come up with its own managed Kubernetes service that is EKS or what Red Hat has done is they came up with their open uh, you know distribution called OpenShift. Uh, VMware has Tanzu. There is something called as Rancher Labs uh, which has created something called as Rancher. So all of these are distributions of Kubernetes. Okay. So it's like if you understand the concept, if you understand the architecture, if you understand how Kubernetes works, then you almost know all of these tools because they are not building anything new, but they are building only user experience on top of Kubernetes or they are providing a better customer experience. Okay. What is customer experience? Let's say you have any issue with EKS. So you know that you can raise a support ticket with Amazon and it will get resolved as soon as possible because you are paying for EKS. Okay. Whereas if you create EC2 instances, okay. And on top of EC2 instances, if you are installing Kubernetes on your own, then if you tell Amazon that, oh, okay, I, I went into some uh, issue on Kubernetes, then Amazon will tell you, let us know if you ran into some issues on EC2, because that is the software that we are providing you, or that is the uh, IaaS tool or compute that we are providing you. Kubernetes is something that you have installed by your own. If you want support from us on Kubernetes, get into our managed Kubernetes service, that is EKS. Uh, yeah, that is EKS. So there are various distributions of Kubernetes and why the distributions are popular because this distributions provides you support. Tomorrow, if you land into some issue with Kubernetes, uh, the open source platform, they will definitely help you, but they have their own timelines, right? So they cannot say that, okay, customer XYZ is uh, running into some issues on Kubernetes. So let me fix their issue. They will have their own priority. Whereas if you talk about uh, the licensed ones because you are paying them money, so they'll give you instant support, okay? but what is the order of this uh, distributions? Like which distribution is very popular and which distributions are uh, widely used? This is very important again is because if you are giving an interview, you cannot say that you are using my uh, mini cube on your uh, uh, production system, then your interviewer will immediately reject you. So you should tell them that, okay, I'm using one of these systems. And what are these one of the systems? Firstly, Kubernetes itself. So now you might ask me, Abhishek, you just told me that uh, Kubernetes is a open source software. You don't have uh, support to it. So I did not tell you that you don't have support to it, but you know, it's not a managed or it's not a distributed uh, or, you know, it's not uh, a platform that is uh, provided by any uh, enterprise like Amazon or Red Hat or anybody who gives you instant support. But the thing is that let's say you are working in an organization that has some hundreds of Kubernetes clusters on their production. Okay, now, or they have one single Kubernetes cluster, but with hundreds of nodes or thousands of nodes. Okay, now to run these applications, to test these applications, there can be 100 developers, okay, or there can be 100 teams with 10,000 developers. Now, if you ask each and every uh, developer to create an EKS cluster, then all of your organization revenue will just go into EKS. Okay, so your organization will go spend a lot of money on just EKS. So what people do is that in their staging or in their uh, pre-production stages they just use the kubernetes uh, systems for local testing or for testing the applications uh, for developers who wants to initially uh, test their software they use uh, k8s or platforms like this instead of uh, eks and one more thing is there can be also enterprises you know which can use kubernetes itself on the production because again there is a reason for it why enterprises can directly use uh, Kubernetes on their production is because not every organization, you know, they have uh, uh, timelines like, you know, if there is any issue, uh, it has to be fixed in one hour. So not every organization uh, runs into such kind of issues. So there are hundreds or thousands or, you know, 10,000 of organizations which still use Kubernetes on production, not just these things. So, okay, so Kubernetes is the topmost one that is used in production. After that, people use OpenShift. And after that, uh, so I have done some uh, research on these things, we read some articles and this is the order. So after that, people use Rancher. Then there is something called as VMware Tanzu. Then comes your EKS, AKS, GKE, 
Docker Kubernetes engine. So all of these things falls after that. No, I'm not comparing Docker Swam with this because they are all Kubernetes distributions. Okay. Docker Swam is a different container orchestration engine itself. Okay. But these things are Kubernetes distributions. There is a difference between uh, both of these things, right? Okay. So now as a DevOps engineer, you should always project yourself uh, to an interviewer that you're not using Minikube or micro k or uh, kind of these things on your production system, but you are using one of these things on your production system. So what is the difference between installing Kubernetes directly versus installing Minikube? So if you are using or installing Kubernetes, that means to say that you are installing Kubernetes with all the capabilities for an enterprise. Okay, for example, just give an uh, example. Minikube can uh, run on a single node architecture with just uh, like, you know, uh, two CPUs and uh, 4 GB RAM. Whereas if you are actually dealing with your Kubernetes cluster in production, you will need a lot of capabilities like your ETCD itself will uh, take a lot of, uh, uh, you know, storage and memory. And then you have your EBS volumes if you're installing on AWS, of course, or else if you have your storage related things and you have all of your components uh, that are, you know, in full blown capacity. So that is the difference between Minikube and Kubernetes. And one more question before I show you the demo in live, because I know you are all uh, very excited about the demo. I'm going to show you how we are going to install, not like Minikube or something, but we will use a tool called COPS, Kubernetes Operations, and I'll show you how in real a cloud engineer or DevOps engineer installs and manages their uh, hundreds of Kubernetes clusters, okay? But one more question is, what is the difference between Kubernetes and EKS? Okay, so the difference between Kubernetes and EKS is if you are installing a couple of EC2 instances and if you install Kubernetes on top of it and make a cluster, that means to say that you are managing this Kubernetes cluster and Amazon uh, will not provide you any support on issues with the Kubernetes, whether it can be misconfiguration or whether it can be any kind of issue on Kubernetes. Whereas if you are using EKS, then you get support from Amazon. That's the only difference. Rest of the things uh, on EKS, they because this is a managed and supported solution by Amazon, they just have some wrappers, they have some additional scripts, they have something called as EKS CTL. So you can consider this as again like a distribution of Kubernetes that is provided by Amazon, which has some additional wrappers, which has some additional uh, plugins and uh, command line options. But end of the day, the solution is the same. Okay, now let's move on to the topic for today. That is how DevOps engineer manage their hundreds of clusters on production. So one of the primary uh, tool uh, or one of the most widely used tools is COPS. That doesn't mean that uh, there are no other tools. So you have tools like uh, Kubedium, you have Kube Squash. There are multiple tools, but COPS is the one that is most widely used. So let's talk about CAP. COPS. So initially, if you talk about four years, five years back or six years back, Kubedium was the one that was most widely used. And even I started uh, learning Kubernetes or creating the clusters using Kubedium. The only difference is with Kubernetes, you have to do a lot of manual activities. And, uh, you know, whenever you are talking about the upgrades or, you know, configuring or uh, modifying your Kubernetes clusters, Kubernetes does not have that smooth uh, uh, way of handling things. Whereas COPS is basically Kubernetes operations. Okay. So that's why it's called COPS. Kubernetes operations. Right. So what COPS brings you is for a DevOps engineer, one of the most important thing is not just the installation, but you have to deal with upgrades, right? Then you have to deal with uh, modifications. You have to deal with uh, deletion of clusters. So all of these things, which is called as a life cycle of Kubernetes. Okay. So you have a life cycle of Kubernetes that is managed by COPS. So that is why COPS is one of the most widely used uh, tools for installing Kubernetes. Whereas if we go for the other options, let's say if you go back to the previous slides, so you have OpenShift, you have Rancher, you have Tanzu. So all of these things have their own set of installations. And like say, let's say you have to install OpenShift. So what you will do is let's say you want to project yourself as a uh, DevOps engineer who knows OpenShift and who works on OpenShift. So what you can do is you can go to the OpenShift talks and you will see that OpenShift provides you a lot of Ansible playbooks. Using this Ansible playbooks, you can install OpenShift platform, but saying that you need to have Red Hat subscription, uh, you cannot, uh, you know, directly use CentOS machines and install OpenShift on, on top of it, but you have to create a Red Hat virtual machines on your Amazon Linux. And on top of that, you can uh, download the Ansible playbooks that are present on the OpenShift documentation and you can install Ansible on top of these things. Okay. But 
be careful all of these things whenever you are uh, purchasing the red hat subscription or whenever you are going for the installation of uh, eks or eks or gke so that will incur some money because you know those things will not be covered by amazon on your free tier so if you have amazon credits or if you know uh, you can uh, you will you are willing to uh, pay for the uh, these things then you can go ahead and try but even if you learn the thing that i am going to talk about today that is using cops how devops engineers manage their production systems that is more than enough okay so you can say that we are using cops and we are managing uh, kubernetes systems on our environment then uh, you know your interviewer will be very interested okay so as i told you all of these things now without wasting any time let me go on to the other screen and let me explain you how to install and do all of these things okay so let me stop sharing here and then let me start sharing my other screen okay uh 1 2 3 perfect okay so one disclaimer before you uh, start trying these things even using cops the thing is that you have to uh, create a couple of ec2 instances then you have to create a bunch of ebs volumes s3 buckets and if you have your custom domain you have to also uh, deal with route 53 so be careful when you are uh, even following this specific demo because even with this because we are creating ebs volumes of size 8 gb and we are creating uh, route 53 and all of these things it will be uh, chargeable so if you don't want to spend money just understand the process that would be even uh, more than enough or else i am going to show you a trick using which you can create the kubernetes cluster without actually uh, you know uh, paying money uh, or you know without actually uh, going into the aws billing okay so the first thing that you would do is uh, configure the aws cli itself right so if you want to uh, create this uh, kubernetes clusters you can follow this specific github repository called kubernetes zero to hero where i have written the steps each and everything like you know you can simply follow these steps and understand the process or you can try out by yourself as well so start this repository in future i'm going to add more and more contents regarding kubernetes into it so firstly there are three uh, prerequisites uh, for this specific installation you need to install python 3 because aws cli requires python 3 and you also need kubectl because you are going to play with your kubernetes cluster if you just want to install and leave it then you don't need kubectl okay if you just want to learn the installation so python 3 and aws uh, cli are the dependencies so either you can uh, carry out this uh, specific demo on your personal laptop or you can also do it on your uh, aws okay so if you want to do it on your aws you can create a ec2 instance uh, in all our previous videos we were using ubuntu so create a ubuntu uh, instance and then you know you can uh, basically run this command so that your aws cli python and kubernetes is configured okay so these are the steps that are required for the dependencies so i am not going into the dependencies because uh, i have explained all of these things in the previous classes as well how to uh, install python 3 aws cli and kubectl if you haven't followed the steps are also uh, available in this specific github document just uh, get the repositories that are required and then uh, perform a apt update then you know install uh, python uh, kubectl and then you know set them to the path that's it now we will proceed to the installations for day that is cops so cops like i told you is the hero uh, for today because we are dealing kubernetes operations using cops so if you again on ubuntu just execute these specific commands so i have already done uh, if you see in my case if i just run cops you will see that cops is installed on my machine okay so just follow the steps that's it i am not doing anything more than that after this comes the interesting parts that is you need to grant your aws uh, cli uh, im user with this specific permissions so if you are using the aws admin user itself like in my case what i am done is uh, you know because i am going to perform demo and uh, i know that i don't use uh, aws im users in the production so what i did is i just use the aws admin user okay so in the previous classes i told you how to uh, you know uh, basically log in into aws using your cli the command that you need to do is aws configure if you do aws configure you will be asked with your aws access key id once you provide that you have to provide your aws secret access key then provide your default region output format and done 
So where did you get this access key and secret uh, access key, like access key ID and secret access key? Just go to your AWS dashboard to your top right. You have one section called uh, security credentials. Just go to this. And once you go here, you will see that there is an option for your um, access keys. Okay. So if you see here, these are my access keys and you can create your own access keys as well. Perfect. So I have done that uh, because I'm using admin user. I don't have to grant the permissions, but if you are not using the admin user and if you are using the IAM user, you have to provide these roles. Okay. That is EC2 full access, S3 full access, IAM full access and VPC full access. If you are already, like I told you, if you're already using admin user that comes by default with all of these permissions. Okay. Just run AWS configure. Then what COPS requires as a prerequisite is you need to create a S3 bucket. Now, why do you need to create S3 bucket? The reason for that is uh, COPS basically is used to manage your hundreds of Kubernetes clusters and to manage these hundreds of Kubernetes clusters. It is very easy if COPS can store all of the configurations of your Kubernetes clusters in S3 bucket. Okay, so it just needs a storage service. So S3 is offered as one of the storage services. So you need to just create just copy this command. Okay. Click on the copy button. Come here and just create the bucket. Okay. So I'll just create the bucket as cops abhi storage one. Okay. So make sure that you change this specific thing. If you are using the same thing, then your uh, S3 command will fail saying that the specific thing is already present. That is the specific AWS bucket is already present. After this, you go to the COPS command that is to create your Kubernetes cluster. So if we debug this command, firstly COPS, we are doing create cluster name of the cluster S3 storage that we have just created. And then we provide what zone it has to be created, which region it has to be created. Then how many node count? Like, do you want a Kubernetes cluster with one node, two node, hundred node? So you can provide uh, whatever you would like to, and then provide the size of the node that is T2 micro or macro or whatever you would like to use. Finally, provide the EBS volume size. Okay, so this is the simple command. You can just copy paste the command as is. And then what you will do is just modify the S3 uh, bucket name in the specific command. I just said uh, hyphen one and uh, also modify the name of the cluster according to uh, your wish. One thing to remember here is I am using cluster with name k local. So the domain that I'm using is a local domain. But in production systems or in your organizations, you will not use this local domain. Instead, you will use something like Amazon.com, Google.com, or uh, if your company is called XYZ, then XYZ.com. And one additional step would be you have to configure these domain in your Route 53. That's the only additional step. The rest, all the steps are the same. So once you do this, your Kubernetes cluster is created. So one tip that I'm going to do, uh, give you here is stop the actions here itself because after this you have one specific command so here itself your kubernetes cluster will be created you will see that your kubernetes cluster is created you can just execute this command and see but all of your configuration is not updated that means so here you are creating the cluster but you are not uh, you know starting your kubernetes cluster so if you have free aws credits or if you have your aws uh, account with some special points or you are you are willing to pay then just execute these commands right now I'm not executing this command because if I execute this command already I have a bunch of things on my AWS account which uh, I'm already spending uh, money on so I don't want to create one more Kubernetes cluster so see here it says that the cluster configuration has been created just finally configure your cluster using this one specific command and your Kubernetes cl uh, cluster configuration will be done. Just wait for a couple of minutes after this because COPS will take uh, some time for starting your Kubernetes cluster. So this is the video for today. And uh, if you have to explain your interviewer, the only thing that you'll modify is instead of your local domain, tell them that uh, we have a domain that we have purchased from GoDaddy or, you know, our organization has uh, procured this domain from some certification authorities and this domain we configure in Route 53. So if you want to learn how to configure this uh, domain in Route 53, again, that's not a, a big process. All that you need to do is there is one simple command that I'll try to put in the document as well. But this is the command. I'm going to uh, paste the command here. Uh, just a moment. I copied it to the notepad. Yeah, so this is a simple command that you are going to execute. Okay.
So what this command does is it would configure like, you know, instead of dev.example.com, just replace it with your domain. Okay. So if your domain is amazon.com, for example, so just replace it with amazon.com and it will create you a hosted zone in route 53. So once you have this uh, hosted zone created on route 53, then your Kubernetes cluster configuration is done. But if you don't want to spend on a custom domain, let's say you are just uh, using these things on your local, not on my on your personal laptop, but even on your organizations, let's say you are trying these things out on your dev environment or staging environment, you can simply use .kh.local, which is a local domain. Okay, so you can also explain this to your interviewer that for my local systems, I'm using .kh.local, but for the production, we are using the uh, .example.com or whatever the domain it is. So this is the video for today. I hope you uh, like the video, but from tomorrow, don't uh, try your actions or you know, don't try your experiments on this uh, COPS created Kubernetes clusters. Like I told you, they'll incur some amount or you know, you have to, uh, uh, you will be built by AWS. So installations, you can do it using uh, Minikube uh, for your local uh, Kubernetes learnings and all of the things. I'll put the comment in the description where I have showed you how to install Minikube in five minutes. Right. So watch that video and tomorrow from tomorrow's video, whatever I'm going to explain you, try that things out on Minikube itself. So this video is just for your understanding of how uh, systems are managed. And if you have free AWS uh, points, then don't worry. Instead of Minikube, you can try on these things itself. So that is the video for today, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye.